is it? It is. You're supposed to talk into the microphone. I was talking into the oh, microphone. Oh, there we go. There, there, now they can hear you. Because before you weren't. Stop shopping. I'm done shopping. I'm done. I spent all the money today. <laughs> let, let, let's hear that again. You did what? I said I spent all While the money. While I'm over here working my fingers to the bone, ended up with bony fingers. You over there shopping? Let me be shopping. That ain't right. That ain't right. Well, we are literally working on my day off, which I'm not I've supposed to be that, doing. I've grading, done that too. grading tests, mind you. That oh my god, how does somebody get a two out of ten on these tests? Dude, I have some of those. I have a kid that got a two point six out of well, wait ten. A okay, let's let's stop trying to compare your students and my students. Okay, fine. Okay, but because still? your students are in second grade. My students are in sixth grade, and they're still not writing with capital letters at the beginning of sentences. Guess what my lesson plan says this week? I don't know what your lesson plan says. I ain't got no idea what your lesson plan says. To I review, know what mine says. PBL. To review how to write a proper sentence starting with a capital. I did not write yeah, the lesson well, plan Yeah, well, maybe I should week. send my kids to your class. Well, they can come on up. And let them stand around the edges and they can sit there while you teach second graders what they can't do. Yep. Come on. Send them on up. Because they had, I mean, if you look at the, one of the pages of my test was make, make five sentences. They couldn't do it. Well, they can do it, but they can't do it well. They can't do it correctly. Like they're, they're, they if they're strong in, like, say, the idea of a sentence, they're weak in the grammar, mm. or they're strong in the grammar and weak in the structure, or they're just all the way bad. You know I what I mean? I was actually shocked at some of the the scores for my grammar exam, because it wasn't really all that easy, especially considering some of the stuff that your kids are doing. They couldn't have passed my exam. I, I they. I, I think I've said this, I said this to somebody, it's like, wow, if I was a parent of these sixth graders, I, I, would, I, I would not be a happy camper at all, because it's just like, no way should they have gotten to sixth grade with the, without the ability to write a coherent sentence in English. Look, the, my lowest grade in grammar... And I don't bump the grades up. I just put the actual number and they can change it if they need to. My lowest grade was 5.3. And that was because the child didn't follow directions. Oh, yeah. I got one of those, too. She missed 20 whole points. out of. There's only 80 points on the test. Mm. She lost 20 because she didn't follow directions. Oh, yeah. I have it's those. It's like, oh, my God. And she can speak English as good as almost every kid in the class. Yep. It's just like... Really? Really? That's... Uh, yep. You're going to fail this test because you didn't read the directions. And, and that's you one of the things... You gave me definitions and not sentences. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, it's the one thing that I was stressing, read the directions... Yeah. Ever since they took the midterm, which was just, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things I went over every single solitary day. If there was something specific like... Use color for the capital letter and the punctuation. I made them underline it. And then they still didn't do it. I, I love the idea. I, and I, I, I'm sure we've said this multiple times already. But I love the idea of children having the word written on the test. Write a sentence using the word submergible. And they forget the B in the word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, how do you even do that? It's written at the beginning of your sentence because that's where the word is. You, I had to write the word correctly for you to... Really, people? Look, come on now. I had a this spelling word, ridiculous. whale. And whale was on the same page at the top of the page. And there was a, a picture of the whale. I got a great one for you. D-U-M-P. He dump. was very dump. Oh. Clearly. Really? Clearly, dump. they don't know the silent B. We watched, we watched Plastic Ocean 
where they talk about dumps and landfills. <laughs> Both words are on the test. Why did you think I'm not very dump? Oh, Lord. We don't like him because he's dump. Oh, Lord. Are you freaking kidding me? Dump? I mean, just say the word. Mm. Well, like, they've learned no, no strategies for English that we would have taught as ESL teachers well, it's back in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. They know none of that in sixth grade. I don't think they had native speakers. I which, know, but dumb. Which makes a difference. Dumb and dump. Makes it's, a difference. Well, it, it shouldn't because the, sign, the, the letter is there. It's not a B. It's a P. Yeah. So it should make a big well, difference. Most of our kids can't identify the num- the letters either, can they? That's a can different they? problem. I, I'm just, whatever. It's, what, ah! <laughs> just dumb. It just doesn't make any sense. None. How does this, how do you get to sixth grade and this is where you are? I don't know, because in sixth grade we were doing all kinds of craziness that, this. I mean, they might be in Spanish. No. See, we don't have a system necessarily that's uh, in, in They total, have it like, now in some places. No, but see, that's just it. We don't have a national system no. that says you must be learning a second language or a third language. Starting in, in preschool. Right. We don't have that. Now, right. granted, the language that we speak is the language everybody else is trying to learn. So that's why we don't have it. You know, it's that arrogance that's there. Yep. Because we should be learning multiple languages yep. starting earlier because we all know as teachers that we're going to learn them better and faster if we start early. Yep. So it makes more sense for us to be doing it. But in America, we're not doing it as early as we should outside of special, like special, outside Programs. of the public school classes or whatever. But yeah, they, I mean, I get it's a second language. It makes no, I mean, it, if these kids have been taking these classes since kindergarten, You're they right. should be way further ahead. Because like I said, my buddies in Thailand, first and second grade, were farther ahead of this sixth grade class. Yeah. And they were coming in at first and second grade. Well, honestly, I think my second grade class is further ahead than the other second grade class because... From what I was told, I was supposed to project the exam on the board and read every single sentence, and they were supposed to answer each sentence as I, or each question as I read it to them. And then if they struggled, I was supposed to lead them. And I did not do that for my students. Isn't that called cheating? Yes. My co teacher did that very thing, and the reading test. There were two sections over books that we had read during the term. This is why they're flying drones over testing in China. Yeah. So during the the review week, I played both of the the stories on Epic so that they could re- refresh their memory. We did a couple of um, exercises so they'd remember the vocabulary and whatever. So... I go to check, uh, ask her a question, and she's playing the books during the exam. She's reading the questions and then playing the book. And I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? That's cheating. You You're think. cheating. Your whole entire group, your 28 students, 29 students, have all, you've, you've helped them all cheat. Yeah. What the hell? I That on top of inflating the grades, if they get less than five, I mean, when you think about it, what is that? What are you going to end up with? In, in, A bunch of dumbasses. Well, what are you going to end up with? Parents are going to think that their children are farther ahead than they are. Yep. Their grades are going to look like they're farther ahead, like they're more knowledgeable than they are. Yep. Um, the government is going to get numbers that make it look like the school is farther ahead than it is, yep. and each student. I mean, it's like if you keep doing it, if you keep inflating it, eventually it's just gonna pop. Yeah. And that's what's ha- that's what you're seeing, and that's what I'm seeing. When you got kids who have zero letter recognition in second grade and sixth grade, 
you've got a serious problem that goes back years. Yep. And you're still doing the same thing. So you're not really, you never really addressed the issue. And just removing the teacher didn't help because the system says the kids can't be held back. Right. And then yeah, the, sy- and they- the system also says that they, they can't be made to feel bad. If you started, if they changed the kindergarten program today, they changed it. They changed their approach. By the time those kids got to first grade, that whole generation of kids, that whole group of kids would be drastically further ahead than your sixth graders are now. Hiya, kitty. But they're they, going to walk across your thing. You should probably put them down. That's all I'm saying. But they, what they don't do is they don't start from the beginning. They're trying to come in and change it in the middle instead of starting What's in, the middle? I don't understand the middle. They're What's trying the to middle? change it in, in elementary school. But these kids spent four years in the kindergarten first. So if they had, if they yeah, changed that program. kindergarten should be different than primary school. But they're not treating first and second grade any differently than they are the preschool. Yeah, I know. So if you're going to call if you're going to have real change, it has to it, start in the preschool. No, it doesn't. They can leave preschool and kindergarten alone. They need to get the basics there. But they're Very, not getting the I, basics. I know, but that that's that they should be doing preschool kindergarten work. Right. Now, outside of that, I don't think they need to really change a lot of other things. First grade then must have a, a completely different structure. You know what I mean? You're supposed to go from kindergarten to first grade, and it's supposed to be, we prepared you now so that you can be successful in elementary school, which Mm -hmm. means when you get to first grade, you know your ABCs. Then they don't. You know, your ABCs. You're supposed to know that coming in, you you shouldn't get this all the way to sixth grade and not know that. Yeah. And I have a student like that. It's like, are, are you kidding me? Well, the and, one... and here's the thing. He doesn't know it in Spanish. Oh. Yikes. Yeah. This, it's not, this is not, this child doesn't know it just in English and it's an ESL problem. Uh-uh. He doesn't know this stuff in Spanish. Holy cow. So it's like. And that's like the one girl I have who doesn't oh my. know. And actually, I think I have a few more than just her. But the one kid, I can't, I can't get him to concentrate for more than 10 seconds to even find out. All right, I've usad now. I have my Modelo here. It's half empty already. Is it the Noche one? <laughs> 13, 13 minutes in, my, my Modelo's almost gone. Um, is this part of it's your our na- last day? Is huh? this part of your International Men's Day awareness situation? Fuck no. Ain't no International Men's Day, nothing. Today is International Men's Day. That's nice. Motherfuckers. I mean, really, why do I care? Because um, you're a man. Yeah, I don't care. Um, <laughs> there was a Children's Day, too, when I was growing up, and I was taught not to care about that. And Grandparents' Day. And a Grandparents' Day. Didn't know, didn't have no, no nothing with that either. Just that Mama Day and, and Daddy Day, and Mama Day always took precedent. Daddies get the shaft. We'll talk about that not. later. Dads get the shaft. You do not Compared get the to shaft. Mother's Day, Father's Day Listen, is is just a little bit more than my children, any other Sunday. My children will never ever live down the fact that they didn't even acknowledge it was Mother's Day last year. So I don't want to hear it because you had Father's Day. I don't want you to. You cannot. You cannot take. A slight one time. No. Nope. When the whole world. My whole world revolves around them. No, no, I'm saying the whole world acknowledges Mother's Day. Father's Day? Eh, nobody really cares about all that. But Mother's Day? Oh, I, yeah, everybody talks about Mother's Day. I care. But Father's Day? Shaft. Last year on Father's Day, we were traveling. I don't even remember. Oh, no. Yeah, last year. We were in Guangzhou. The kids were in the States. Father's Day? Uh-huh. When, I don't even know when Father's Day is. Anyway. June. Um. Now that I've wusad, I've, I've gotten these 
final exams finished. I can take the rest of this couple days and try to get them entered in, but it doesn't matter if they're entered in because we don't have the grade book to put them in. Okay, let me let me get away from the education now. Take a little deep breath. <sighs> Hoosa. All right, now what are we gonna talk about? Because I'd rather talk about something interesting and not school. Well, not this is education. kind of school related. Oh no! It's not. That's it's, the whole no, point. No, 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 I don't no, no. want to talk this about that. We've got thirty days, and I swear, half of those days world so school. far have been education. Psst. World school related. I don't give a. Um, I, I we want to enjoy asked, my modelo. Listen, we were asked today what type of materials we use and where we find the materials to but that's to, education to educate our children school it's go to not. the youtubes go to the youtubes for the ck-12 youtube itunes itunes ibooks I mean, they could essentially they could use the iTunes U. Yeah, we we use just some of because, that stuff. I mean, they could do like everything that their professors are saying to do the assignments and stuff. They could do those. They do them. I like a lot of times if we have they're not doing shit. If I give I'm telling them you now, people, these kids ain't doing shit. Aaron and Keegan on a are, daily basis aren't doing anything at they all. Ain't doing shit. If I have a, if I give them a book. And I want them to answer questions about the book. I may go to iTunes University and search for that book and find the lesson plan that goes with it and then send them. Yeah, but that them. sounds like you doing the work. No, no, I'm no. talking about them going on to iTunes U, using their iPads, and doing the work that oh. the person is assigning for the course that's there. That's not you doing anything. That's just them doing the work. Yeah, but sometimes I assign that stuff and throw, send it through their Google cl Classroom or... Uh -huh. They ain't doing shit. But they they've used, so slack and they ain't even, they ain't even, they ain't doing nothing. They use the crash course on YouTubes a lot. But this person wanted information for college age and for little people. Of which we have none. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like we can't give the information. We're, it's we the same any, information. We don't have any of those people. It's the same information. I know, but I mean, if we use the available things electronically speaking, because that way we don't have to carry around stuff. Right. And we try to get the free things. Right. Because like the CK-12, which gives you textbooks for lots of different ages and subjects. I mean... In math, you can go all the way from basic algebra all the way through calculus. Right. In science, you can do life science. Biology, chemistry. All the way, yeah, all the way. Biology, chemistry, physics, you can go all the yeah. way up. So, I mean, it's, and I think biochem is in there too as a textbook as well. Mm. So, I mean, it's just. A, and they used to be interactive textbooks. So I don't know they if they used still to have some. Are. Yeah. Some were interactive. Some were just basic regular textbooks. We it all depends really on the subject. We got a really good writing, um, a writing book, like creative writing book that helped them with their NaNoWriMo stuff last year. Um, it, it talks about different authors and different writing styles, and it really helped them to develop their own writings. Another place to go to get free books is Google Books. People, people I don't ever use Google people Books ever. People have so slept on Google Books. But if you go there, any book that is um, out of copyright is pretty much on Google Books and it's all free. So. But can I open the book in my iBooks? I believe they're, they have multiple formats for each book. So if it so might have an EPUB, EPUB version, PDF. Because you can open up PDFs in your eyes. I don't like reading PDFs it on my... It doesn't matter what you like. You can open it. I don't like it. They're not easy to <laughs> you read. You ask and you open it. You didn't ask if you would like it. I don't like to read the PDF, a I book in PDF on my phone or my iPad because you can't change the text size. Yeah, it, none of that matters. It, it Honestly, it's... It does matter. No, no, no. And if you zoom in, you can take... It does Sometimes change, they but, don't zoom. Oh, stop. I'm telling you, 
Get the free books wherever you can get find free books. You can also find free books in iTunes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are hundreds free of free books. books. I mean, there's lots of sites that have books. Shit, if you were smart, you could have got The Martian for free when he first wrote it. Because right. he gave it away. Yep. It was. I mean, his whole thing was to write the book, and then he gave it away online. I get, a bu- I so. get free books every month. Like... I, I mean, go to it, iTunes they're there. They're once there. a month and I go to the free book section because if you're on a device and you just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the first page of iBooks, there's going to be like a little free book section and you just go and download whatever you want. Yeah. So you got you have lots of books. So then then what you're talking about is crafting a curriculum. Yes. Now, in crafting a curriculum, if you I mean, the easiest thing to do. It's just borrow from someone else. That's the, the easiest thing where you're not trying to actively create a curriculum because that's super duper boring work. Yeah. So, and most people that are not teachers, and I would say most teachers, they, they don't want to do that work. No. <laughs> um, I don't want to do it. But if you look at where do you need to be? This has been always been my thing with our kids is where do they need to be? They need to be at a certain level in each subject in order to prepare them for university. So when we left the States, it's always been, I really don't care when you get there, as long as you get there before it's time to take any type of entrance exam or anything like that, because that's when you're going to need to be done with right. that particular thing. But Here's the kicker. That first year, you're going to take all that shit again. Yeah. And it's like, this is why I don't like our university system. Because it's really, if you're weak in math, then you'll take a basic math class. I mean, think of all the Chinese kids we sent to the States that are in universities right now that didn't even, don't even have, bat, they don't have high school diplomas. Right. But they they're in universities. They could. They don't even have enough English to say my name right. is. And they and they're in universities in the United States. So right. if that can happen for foreign kids, foreign kids, it can happen for anybody. It's just it's just a matter of do they have the capacity to learn? Yeah. And that's been the thing that we've always focused on was teaching our kids to learn using many different ways of trying to get that information. So it's sitting down and reading a book. It's using a, an electronic device, which they do have to do because of our moving situation. Our lifestyle. But then it's, you know, can you have a conversation? Can you listen to a video? Can you watch a video? Can you pull information out and use it again? You know, all of those skills that basically everybody is learning in, at the high school level and junior high school yeah. level. That's what they've had to do from the beginning. Right, since they were seven and nine exactly. years old. So, so. that's, that's the, the difference. It's like you have to have this as a parent that's homeschooling or as a parent that's world schooling. You have to, th- be, you have, to have this, this overarching umbrella. You have to have this, this big idea. They need to be here. Maybe they don't need physics because most kids don't need physics in high school. Most kids don't take physics. I've never in high had school. physics. So then, okay, and like calculus, and no, no that's not calculus. really a thing anybody needs. So okay, what do they really need? Well, they need basic algebra because when they get to university, that's where they're going to be tested. And if they have basic algebra, depending on their their um, level or depending on their um, chosen uh, degree path. Basic algebra might be it. Yeah. Or they have to take more. Right. So no matter what, they're going to start at basic algebra when they get there as a freshman. No matter what their thing is, that's going to be a basic requirement. If you have some basics of basic algebra, yeah. guess what? You're right in line with everybody else. Now, all those other people went up and took all this calculus and all this stuff. Trig and, and they blah, still blah, blah. are going to be back in basic algebra because they have to pass that class or test out of it. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I think this is where the racket of of universities and education comes in because it it's better for them to have you take 10 classes than to test out of four of those, you know? And, you know, they're going to want you to take all those classes. So if, they're, if you're going to have to take them, why do you need to take them... All, you know, why do you, why did you, why did I need analytical geometry in high school? You didn't. You know, 
I, I, I just absolutely didn't. And, and I guess just like, honestly, I didn't need economics in high school either. Nope. But it was a requirement for our school and we had to take it to graduate, you know, so every school decides what is necessary for their students, which I get. But when you're world schooling, you're going to have a different thing because you're not educating, you know, part of a district of kids. Right. You're, you're only educating your kids. And that means you've got options. You can... You know, you can be heavy in the arts. Mm -hmm. You can be light in the arts. You can be heavy in the math or light in the math. It, it, it's all up to you. You can look at more applying knowledge than just holding on to useless facts and figures. Right. Be because honestly, uh, nobody remembers their chemistry class. Nobody remembers their biology class. I mean, you remember aspects of it that you enjoyed maybe, but you don't necessarily use that on a daily basis unless you're working in that field. Right. And, you know, and the same thing, they can say the same thing about, say, music or, um, you know, art class, actual art class, which I don't Ugh. know if they exist anymore. And or or like literature. A lot of the people that are in the sciences may not really enjoy the literature all that much well, or in the math. They may not enjoy the literature all that much, but they had to take it. And maybe they remember reading a Shakespeare you know, play, but then they didn't right. like it. And they, that's, you know, that they're, they that were steered toward, path. you yeah. know, another direction, but you know, yep. I, I, I always tell kids, you know, if they could focus on the arts more, not our kids, but my students, mm -hmm. if you could focus on the arts more, you have more to talk about, right? You have more to think about. And it'll open your eyes to a lots of other ideas out there. It's like, that's why I always talk about like pop culture and stuff, because that's what they're thinking about and seeing. These are the things they're talking about, but they don't know how to talk about it. In my case, in English to me. Right. So if they can talk about it and argue about it and think about it, mm -hmm. all of a sudden Avengers is a teaching tool. Yes. You see what I mean? And, and and you can do a lot with that, but the teachers have to be willing to not just say, oh, you know, literature was painful for me, so it's got to be painful for my students. It's like, no, that's not true. But if they, if you can, if you can make it relevant and you can have the discussion, because what do we, what are we always asking people to do when it comes to the arts? Analyze it, take it in. See how you react to it. Be able to express that reaction in written and oral form. Yep. I mean, that's those are the basic things that we do in, say, an English class. So if that's the case, I don't care how you get it. I don't care what movies you watch. Can you talk about it? Can you tell me right. about it? Can you write about it? Can you convince me? Right. Can you prove to me that I should watch it? Yeah, once you do all of that, because like uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is a great example of that, because my kids came back and told me how I had to go see it and how it was so good and it was so great and all blah, 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 blah. But you okay, had already fine. seen it? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about before I oh. saw it. They saw it the first day. I was like, okay. And then when I did see it and I came back and started to explain to them, I'm now modeling that behavior right. of essentially a college student for them of standing in front of them and examining something yep. and Digging down into it. And it's all verbal. But that's this very thing that I'm trying to get them to see. Because we're about to read Animal Farm. We're uh. about to have to sit down and read a book. And then Talk we're going to have to it. pull that information out of it. Critically look at it. Relate it to how and then, their lives. Exactly. And, and start really starting to think about these things and these ideas that are brought up in that book. And then they're going to have to write about it. Because right. that's all you do in English. Yep. <laughs> I mean, forget all the, the grammar stuff. That's just the how you write it. Right. You know, that's how you structure everything. But the, the, the ideas and coming up with new ideas and those damn pigs. Yeah, you, you know, come on pigs. now. That's what you... That's what we're trying to get them to do. So as far as world schooling is concerned, why not just have your kids do anything? Have them get any book that they want to read and you sit down and you let them read it and make them discuss it. Because I, I even tell my kids' parents at school the same thing. 
It does not matter what your child reads. They yep. just need to read in English. Yep. If you can do that and talk to them about it or just have them tell you about it, it's going to be far better for them than filling out some bullshit piece of paper that says, I like this book. Right. Instead of, you know, really thinking about it, you know, and, and, and you can, as a parent, then ask those questions because... Maybe it is interesting. Maybe it's boring as hell to you. Right. Now, make the kid explain to you why you should read it right. or why it's yep. good or whatever. All of a sudden, now you've had a class. You had a lesson. Yep. They've gotten something more out of it just by trying to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, and if you do that with all the subjects. See, our kids are conditioned now that they go and they read something or see something or learn something new and they're conditioned to come to us and tell us about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of kids don't do that. No, well, most of the parents don't want them to do that. Well, because they're talking about shit they don't know. Right. Whereas we always looked at it like, oh, really? That's what you learned? Where did you get that from? Well, let's look that up. Well, let's go see what that is or what more is there is, you know, and then when your questions and ask and see, that's the thing. You have an adult mind and you're asking your questions, which then they never thought about, which then extends your now, you're now extending your lesson yep. that you put them through because now they're thinking about new things and now you're learning together and now, you know, you're doing all of those co, co, co things that, yep, your you know, you're, your that, that, it, that yeah. you want to do inside of education. Yeah. So, I mean, you can do it in a more natural way relaxed setting yeah. your home or the park or, or the here beach, or there or, or whatever <laughs> because see you can now just go to those places and sit down and like really dig into shit just like you would and and getting them ready for that kind of inquiry that they're going to need to have when they get to a university yes. level that's what we're preparing them for and we're, and we're giving them that confidence and time management and the independent study and the independent inquiry that's the type of thing that we've really pushed on Aaron and Keegan since they were teeny little people I mean I know more about dinosaurs than the average bear does because our son was so obsessed when he was little and he continues to be obsessed Brontosaurus and Aaron he's gonna come up here <laughs> Brontosaurus! Oh, dear God. Stop. Gotta love the Brontosaurus. Well, my, so, it was like my favorite dinosaur growing up. It was my favorite dinosaur, too, but... That and the Triceratops. So, I know what I know about dinosaurs and prehistoric whatevers and the because of our child. I never looked this stuff up on my own. I like the Brontosaurus. Who knew the thing wasn't real? The Brontosaurus is real. <laughs> Don't you, don't you, don't you make me come over there. Brontosaurus is real. It was not. It was, okay. So. It's not. Anyway, the, the, the big thing I think for anybody who is thinking about or trying to, because a lot of times what, what people do it and, and maybe, I mean, yes, I did go to school for teaching. Let's put that out there. But <laughs> yes. honestly. We both went to school I, teaching. But I was, I was able to do what I do now before I went to school to learn to teach. Yeah. I learned how to write lesson plans the way that are, is an acceptable way to write a lesson plan for an educational institution in school. But I didn't learn how to teach there. I knew how to teach before I got there. The thing that was different is, can you... And I, and I did this to my kids when uh, in studying for their final exam in spelling. They were saying, oh, there's so many words. And I said, well, look, most of these words are not going to be on your test because there's no way for I'm going to test. You. I, I can't test you on all these words. It's the test would be too long. So you need to be able to explain these words to a second grader. Yeah. If you can explain these words to a second grader, then you understand the word. Yep. And then you'd be, if you can do that, you can then use it in a sentence correctly. Yep. So 
that changed everything about the way they thought about the words because they were just taking the definitions and trying to memorize the definitions of of Ugh, how what boring. was it 90 words or something like that it was 90 different words cuz they the one word list they created was 63 words so the other ones were like 15 and 20 maybe somewhere around there they weren't they weren't very big but the thing is that 63 words came out of a plastic ocean it came out of a a documentary that that I would say most of them understood maybe 60 50 to 70 percent of Mm -hmm. so I'm talking about vocabulary words. so they had to look a lot of those words up and some of them did look them all up but then if you ask them, what is that thing? They couldn't tell you. Even though they wrote all this stuff down in their notebooks, they still couldn't tell you. So, okay, I'm, I'm my, I always use you. I'm my wife's student. Explain it to me. Make me understand what, what, what that idea is or what that thing is. What is a nurdle? I don't know what a nurdle is. What is a nurdle? Explain it to me. What is a pellet? What you is a nurdle? Mean? Huh? What is a nurdle? The nurdle is the uh, the pre-production uh, plastic beads. Uh, it's the thing that they. It's the thing that that in a plastic ocean they show uh, got dumped off the that, thing, and all those little white beads were all that, over the place. Um, in, Chinese. In, yeah. Car the cargo. Yeah. Containers, Container. five containers went down, and so he said it, not me. That's that's you know it's, but it, can you explain it to a second grader? Can you explain? I mean, it's easy to explain things to someone in your own age level, yeah, because you have a shared vocabulary yep. for the most part. But can you break it if you can if you can break it down? And this is what I have done with our kids all along Mm -hmm. because if I tried to, I mean, honestly, there have been times when I've tried to explain things in my words to adults and and their brain shut off. Our children have that problem. So I'm just saying you have to learn how to not talk down to people, but how to meet them wherever they are. So if you know you're going to be talking to a second grader, you're going to change how you say what you say to relate to that second grader. Yes. And if you can do that with a new vocabulary word for you, right. you know it. Yep. Yep. I used to play a game with my grams. They're in the Reader's Digest, every month they would have these two pages of new words. And they would give you a sentence. And then the word would be a part of the sentence and then you would have to guess out of the three or four options what the word meant. And I started playing that game with her with her when I was probably first grade. By the time I got to high school in composition class, I never ever ever had to write a definition ever because playing that game helped me remember the words and but my vocabulary was so huge that when we had all the definitions that we had to write I could just say oh austere means blah 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 and I never had to look anything up now you do of course I do because now you're old but how am I gonna words change there are new words added no no I'm saying you're old you can't remember the old words yes I can come on now you know you old no, I'm not that old that I can't remember what I already know. But that's what I try to teach our students, mm. especially the the littles, because I want them to be able to use the words. They get these new words and they just sit on their page. They write them down, but then they don't ever really use them. So I find stories where they hear the words again and again and I ask them to start using it or I start practicing with them. And that's the same thing I did with Aaron and Keegan when they were little. I remember, (laughs) I remember when we were in the store once and two was probably two. I don't know, three, four years old. Two was two. 
and he he wanted this movie and i said i'm sorry honey it's not child appropriate it's not it's not for your age and he walked over to something else and he said is this one child appropriate and he picked up i don't know some other movie and this lady was just floored that he could not only understand what i said but then go and look at something and choose something that was more appropriate for him at the time and he was so little and i just looked at her and i said when you talk to him in that way that's the way they learn if you give them the language early then that's how they're yeah but see you know what people this is okay for anyone that has a baby right now you holding a baby there's a baby right there you know in the other room or whatever just talk normal. Oh God! Don't do all the whole you have binky, to do is talk bubby, normal. The only way blanky, that they're going bullshit. to Brontosaurus is not real. The only way <laughs> he came up with his new Nerf gun. The only way <laughs> that you there's about to be a war. The only way that any person acquires language is to have that language spoken to them. So. If you just speak to them, you don't have to, you know, use $20 words. It's but fun, though. It's just speak normal. Don't do baby talk. Just talk. They will start to learn what you're saying. They will understand your intent. And they will learn the words and use them correctly. Yep. You better back up. I remember playing games with Aaron going. in the car. Like I was trying to distract him from something sights. and taught him carnivore, omnivore, and herbivore just Backing because up. I needed to distract him while we were in traffic. He's, you know, three years old. You give him the words, teach him how to use them. You should then expect that they're going to use them. I don't, we never did the. Passy, blanky, ba, baba. What did you say? Passy for pacifier. What the hell is a fucking passy? A pacifier. Is that like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> Patsy? Not a Patsy. Like the binky or the nook binky? or the. What the fuck is a binky? It's the same thing. It's a pacifier. Oh, God. But it's just... Why can't we just say pacifier? You and I did, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when our ch- our With children the were little, fire. where's my pacifier? <laughs> he was English for a little while. Pacifier, <laughs> mommy, where you broke my pacifier? I didn't, Aaron. You did. <laughs> I'm did. sorry, but it really. I mean, and if you want, if you want your child to be understandable, yes, you've got to give them the language. So that you can understand them. So that they can express what they're thinking and feeling at that moment. Yep. And that's usually where the frustration comes in. Because they don't have the words. Mm -hmm. They're frustrated. You're frustrated because they don't have the words. It's like, but that's what that was your job. Right. The first four freaking years. You had four years. You had high school with them. Yep. Teach they asked. You remember the first time that Aaron said to your mom, Grandma... Uh, you make me frustrated. <laughs> and she said, Aaron, you're too little to have those feelings. He said, but I have them. I know. Yeah, he wasn't too little to have those feelings. She just I think wasn't the problem ready for him to express, to express the those feelings in words. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. But yeah, you're never, you're not, you're, the, no child is. But if you want your, I mean, when you think about it, once children can acquire or build the, those building blocks of language, they start to be able to organize the world yeah. around them. So cat means cat way earlier. Yep, instead of calling all, every animal a dog. Exactly. That doesn't really happen. I don't think that ever really happened with our kids for no, very because, long. No, no, they never had that. Aaron and Keegan never had that every animal with four legs right. was a dog. Because the way you and I speak spoke to them and, and they encouraged had, they also had them in the house right but they also easier. had like we encourage other adults to speak to them mm-hmm. as people and not to as children and that's where adults mess up when they're educating their children they speak to them like children instead of speaking to them like people i mean i guess I, the, this is where that cultural thing comes in because a lot of people don't want their children entering into adult conversations 
And that's that's definitely a cultural thing. But yep. the the other side of that is if you want your children to be able if to you have want them to be able to express themselves <laughs> in all forms, I'm sorry, but and and we and it could be because we were English teachers too. But we correct them. All the time. But because that's my they, British grandmother. If they say she if they do something, me. it doesn't matter where they do it. If they write a note, if they put it in a card. They put it in a text if they message. they put it in a text message. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, no, that's not. I don't think that's what you really meant. You know, we're not going to see, you know, fantastic breasts. <laughs> That would be a, not not a good idea for us. Let's 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 not pick the porn. Let's pick the other movie. You know, I mean, but yeah. that's that's what we do, and we and we've always made it. It wasn't really all that punitive. No, it's no, never no. been punitive. It's always been, um. Okay, let's let's look at why this is not right, and then understand it, and then we just move on. We don't have, it's not like, you know, oh my God, you're so stupid. No, no. Well, I just had that Unless, list. unless we're talking about the MCU and DC and then you can be all, you know. Yeah, then, then you that. can pick on me. Um, but I just had that last week with a student. The The word was whale and he wrote W-A-I-L. Whale. And I said, w- I want you to look at this because you wrote, spelled it correctly if you wanted to. Woo, whale. But look at your page again and, and find the other kind of whale and he looked at it and he was like oh and he ran away and fixed it and came back and that's how we've always taught Aaron and Keegan this is okay if you meant this but if you meant something else then we have to use a different spelling yeah that's like a whole word. bad word thing I was explaining to one of my students bad word yeah because they have that here they have this notion of bad words and it's like no no, I don't. I don't buy the idea of bad words because there's just appropriate they, and inappropriate right. for the situation. It and all the age. depends on the situation, and yeah. that's what that's what that's what's not taught in language mm. for especially the little kids because depending on the culture, the religion, moral ideas, whatever, just people don't want to hear it. When you put all that together, what you end up with is trying to stop children from doing something well instead of teaching them when it's appropriate no. right 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 i have in my second graders they say no manches all the time which is no way but the other spanish-speaking teachers don't want them saying that because in spanish there's another thing that instead of meaning no way it means like no shit or you know bullshit and it's very close and so they don't want them saying no way in Spanish. So the other day, a, a child said, oh, no manches. And somebody was like, this is far. I said, listen, this is English class. So if you're going to say no way, you have to say no way in English. And they were like, wait, we can say it in English? And I said, of course you can. It doesn't mean the same thing. It means no way. So say it in English. It's appropriate in English class. Can we say it in Spanish? And I was like, I don't know. You have to ask the Spanish teacher. Mm-hmm. But you can't. I mean, if they don't want you saying it in Spanish, I can, I can, you know, easily squash that in my classroom because you're supposed to speak English. Yep. Yeah. The I I don't know the the idea of <laughs> language. It it just it. As an English teacher, ESL teacher, literature teacher, language is used for all kinds of reasons and means and ways. And it's been this way, you know, in all the different languages, you know, sometimes, I mean, in one, one word that's bad over here is art over there and inappropriate over there and totally appropriate over there. Same word. Yeah. So it's like, eh, stop, stop trying to label these things as... They are something that you should not say in all instances. That's just not true. It's never been true. No. And the teachers should teach it that way to so that when they, they don't have a kid who is quote unquote cursing in school, you don't are not you're not just trying to give that kid detention because like that's gonna change what they say. Yeah. It's like that's just not how we work as people. You know, we we 
say what's on our mind at the time. And if we have a filter, if we've learned what the filter should be, then we can be held accountable to using that right. filter. But if we've never had the filter and you've never taught it and all you said was don't use it, oh, well then what do you well, expect? You expect them to use it right, but never told them how to use it right. Well, that you and I sense. have like a different, like an issue anyway, because our children travel around the world. And when we were preparing to come here, not that they say it often, but they have said it. I've, I reminded them that we were moving back to a Christian country and that if they said Jesus Christ, like, oh, Jesus Christ, that someone would be offended. So they needed to find a different way to express what they wanted to say without offending someone unintentionally. If they say at home, I don't care because it doesn't mean anything to me. But outside of the house, they could be offensive and it could, cause, it could cause a problem. So we have to be aware not only of how we say things and where we say things, but what the cultural significance is. Well, I would say that would be the, the case for anybody that's world schooling. Yeah. Anybody that's not in there, who, anybody who's an expat with children. Yeah. They, I mean, we all have to do that because we're always, in, in a lot of cases, culturally walking on eggshells. Because you could be offending people and never even knowing you're offending. Right, right, right. Yep. Yep, it's always unintentional, so. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, I, it's unintentional until you know it. Well, and then yeah. when you know it, it's you now then it's a, then it's a choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll agree to that. Then it's a choice. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Who you got to pub today, man? What you, what you today got going I on am, there? I'm pubbing a um, early childhood. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's don't look ready. Just hold on, I gotta open up yeah, my thing. See, that's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Change the voice. Go. So this is for people who are in Grand Grand View, Missouri. Chanel Shining Star is a free homeschooling for children ages 2 to 4 years old every Tuesday and Friday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Chanel is passionate about teaching uh, really young children how important it is about self-love. She is ready to teach young children how important it is to explore and have experiences, and they should be able to learn about things that they want to know and about culture and uh, uh, cultures of the world on their level. Learning should integrate physical play and hands-on learning. Her entire life, she's wanted to do something with children. She just never knew exactly what until now. So if you are in the Grandview, Missouri area and would like some free homeschooling for your two to four-year-old Tuesday and Friday afternoon, I will post all of the information to contact Chanel. See? You just did it. I did not. You just did it. Did what? You just did it. What's you that? just used a term that in different contexts could have very different meanings. What? You just did it. And that's what I'm talking about, people. What Teach did? people how to use the terms that are appropriate and when they're appropriate. What did There's I your say? teaching moment. What? Self-love. Oh, dear Lord. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You you break out to self love. It means something depending on the age super... of the kid. You can't talk about self love when you get past sixth, seventh grade. Here. You can't. I they was... start giggling. When I they start super... giggling, you know you said some shit. Listen, I was super impressed with her when self-love. I was speaking with her because I asked her what her philosophy of education was. Case in point. I said all I said was self love, and the boy started giggling. It See? is. It you is for love, little people. You, I know, but everybody should love themselves, right? They everybody should. should. But when you say self love, <laughs> it conjures a Please different don't meaning. Make this something it isn't. No, I'm no, I'm just saying. I, no, no, no. It already is. It it's just context. That's what we were talking about. Context. If yeah. I say self love to a six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelfth grader, um, I'm gonna get giggles in the classroom. True. Hence. Isla Nubar over here. <laughs> but I was super impressed with her because I was asking what her philosophy of education was because, of course, she's an early childhood educator. And she... So you were hazing her is what you were doing? Nope. 
I just wanted to know, you know, which philosophy she followed and blah, blah, blah. In other words, you were hazing her. I was not. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I you wanted were. to see just, if she was a kindred just, spirit. Just, just. just. I just wanted to see if she was a kindred spirit. Just admit it, man. You were hazing the poor lady. You were <laughs> like, you're like, look, if she don't say the right thing, she ain't going to say shit about this lady. She stuff. said the right thing because she you said. See, that's, why, that's should, why you just changed your voice Children should her. learn by, through play. Mm. Yes. Don't make them sit down. Mm-hmm. Teach them to be respectful. Teach them to learn everything they need to learn and have fun while doing it. That'd be nice. Mm. It's what we did. Yeah. Everything they needed to learn. So I was super impressed with her. Good. And the fact that she wants to offer free classes to kids in the evenings, that's just amazing. If you can. If you can. If you can. I love that she's it's all, doing it's, it. It's a matter of having the means to be able to do it. Yeah. To offer this service yeah, yeah, for free yeah. is my point. I think it's amazing, and, and I'm I all mean, about it. If I could, if I could eat on a daily basis and and pay all my bills, I'd teach for free. Yeah. I mean, I do it anyway. Right. You have two children. You teach every day. No, no, no. I teach everybody around me. I can't help it. I know. It's like a compulsion. It's really one of my favorite things in the world about you. I can't. I just can't stop myself. Keep on stepping, dude. Don't be looking at me. Don't be eyeballing me. I'll shoot you right. I'm going to shoot you in your nose. He said brontosaurus and he yelled it. Keep walking. Well, okay. The reason why I sent you the gift of Ross doing like this. I know. Because I didn't hear daddy say it. I just saw the message that you sent me. Yeah, because he said it. He said it. We've got it on tape. There was no context. Brontosaurus lives. (laughs) <laughs> Don't shoot me. I'm going to give you context <laughs> in your eyeball with our new Nerf guns. <laughs> the wars, wars break out. Just keep walking. <laughs> Isla Nublar. Just keep on going. Don't even stop. You're cracking me up. Don't. 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 <laughs> Just keep on going. We ain't got no problem here. There's you guys no are problem. Funny. All right, and now we need to get off here so that I can upload our our uh, Sunday show and and then upload our. Actually, I think can't you upload two shows at a time? I believe so. You, you can, can give it a go. Maybe that's what I should do. We'll upload both at the same time so the people won't cry. So I know y'all crying out there because y'all didn't see a Sunday thing. Well, you didn't see a Sunday thing because I edited it this morning because there was no school. Yep. Next week is PBL week. PBL and Christmas songs. Woohoo! I ain't I teaching wanna, nothing. I want to have a pot of this for Christmas. Be discovery and exploration what's all your, week long. What's your Christmas song? I have no idea. You didn't pick them yet? I didn't pick anything. I am the guy surrounded by four women. I choose nothing. Why? You're so lucky. Nothing. All I do is sit back and they do it all because I am always going to be outvoted. So what's the point? That's not cool. That's life. In China, you were always outvoted because you weren't Chinese. Here, I'm outvoted because I'm the only guy. And I'm kind of the only guy in the elementary school <laughs> that teaches Besides, a core subject. Yeah, you're the <laughs> only one. I am the only one. Yep, you are the only so, one. Yeah, no. Yep. We're doing it. Ain't a, easy I want a being hippopotamus green. for Christmas. Come on. What was that color thing that they made us do early on in education classes where you had to go and they matched your, like, you had to answer like a set of questions and you end up with a particular color and oh. that color said something about who you were. There's like four different colors. It's a certain personality I forget test, what that but was. I can't think of what yeah. it is. It, it like changes every few years. I'm sure it doesn't, it's not relevant anymore. But the one I took back you, at uh, UMSL was, I was green. I don't remember what I was. And that was the, it's not easy being green. And we were the group that was always serious and analytical and blah 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 so we got bubbles and i kept the bubbles never used them they're still in storage here 
I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're, they're, I kept them. They, I kept the bubbles. I never used them. They were still there. If anybody knows what that little thing is, it was kind of interesting back in the day. Because that's exactly who I was. I was that guy. I'm surprised our cats even want to have anything to do with us after their Oh, come on. They don't visitors care. visitors this afternoon. Yeah, they took a nap and woke up, and that pain was like from like four years ago. They don't even remember. We had They we have had a no vet. concept of when that thing happened. We had a vet come to the house today and give the cats their shots, all four. Because worms were crawling out of booties. Yeah, they, uh, they had to be dewormed, and then they had to have their other shots. And the rabies shot was free. And um, they told us if we could wait until February that we could get them neutered for free. So we'll be waiting until February. Wait, why? Because they're doing in February and March, they do it for free. Ooh. And they, the well, vet's going to... Well, we can wait and, unless they start spraying. Well, I asked him... If I, they start spraying, next day, they gone. ass is getting snipped. Yeah. Um, I asked him, you know, they're five months now... They haven't started spraying yet, which is the latest I've ever had cats that, and they haven't sprayed. I said, are they going to start spraying anytime soon? And he said, probably not. They may never spray because they're with their brothers and there are no other cats in the house. So he said they should be good until February. So the reason why Shakespeare was spraying is because Guru was there? Yep. And the reason why the boys were spraying was because the girls were there. That ain't right. So... Um, no. Um, it might have been why yeah. they they the one got, went in heat earlier than she should have. It may huh. have been. Well, what else you got for the uh, for the people? That's it. I'm sure they don't care about cats at this point. I'm so excited though. The vet comes to your house. I mean that's nice, but I'm sure they don't care. And they're gonna come and pick them. We'll up talk about them. pets and being an expat with pets later. We'll have to have the cat lady with us. Because that sucks. Yes, but our child needs it. No, no. that's We'll talk about it later. <laughs> See, you want to go off and, and stay here for another hour. I that's know. not that's not about to happen. I'm just sticking up for our baby girl. Okay, like I said, it's, it's irrelevant. We're not talking about it. And okay. I ain't talking to you for another hour. It's just not going to happen. That's Don't right. talk I to me my... for the next 50 years, 70 years. So. No, I just... No, you just put your My headphones on. My ears turn on. on when the microphone turns on. <laughs> That's I'm so in. not I'm, true. I'm going into YouTube mode. I get oh, I can have a YouTube mode. I didn't even do a, I didn't do a, a vlog this week. Ooh. Ooh. You could vlog tomorrow walking up the asthma hill. It's so dark though. No, no, no it's no, actually it's light now. I don't know. I need to, I need to do a vlog. I don't know what I'm gonna vlog about. If anybody has any ideas about vlog, what should I vlog about? I'm still trying to put it together. I thought I was going to do a pre-Sunday vlog, but... I don't have to do I got to do a different kind of vlog. I can go somewhere and do it. I don't know. Uh, we'll start, we'll, I'm still putting it together. Maybe I can find a... Maybe I can find a time where I can vlog from in my classroom when nobody's there. I'm... I could, I could, might do. You have something to do tomorrow, right? Don't you have to go somewhere during school tomorrow? Um, I might be able to get our, get the bank account open, but we have to meet with the lawyer tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yep. If they show up, because they didn't show up last time. Exactly. We'll see. So there you go. That's it. All right. Say goodbye to the people. Bye, people. Peace.